Okay. I think this is my fourth half hour, and this will complete with 11 and 12. Uh, it shouldn't even go 30 minutes. But uh, it's a lot of information. Again, the only man who has ever explained it properly, and it was written that way. God didn't want somebody else to figure it out. It's, one, it's my third proof. The writing of the books and the knowledge in it, first proof, both books. Um, my knowledge of heaven, being Elijah, which primarily I put into, uh, he put into the book. And then this. This chapter 21 is very important. So be sure to share it, talk to people about it. And tell them, oh, well, I probably figured out 53. I figured out when God's coming back. Yeah, I did it myself. <laughs> See if they believe it. They won't. It's the who told you. <coughs> Nobody's been able to figure that out. And you say, well, that's easy. All you're going to know is Isaiah eleven fifty three, Jeremiah 31, and uh, Ezekiel, where you'll find God's covenant of friendship. Yeah, we got a covenant coming. And uh, the covenant of sin forgiveness that comes in Malachi 3. When you get to Malachi 3, now you're on the last page of the prophets. And what happened? God stopped speaking to his prophets. Okay, this is his last words on what the day of the Lord is. Because he completely changes it. Completely. It was supposed to be a day, and according to, there are seven prophets who say day of the Lord. And inevitably, it was uh, in the, uh, the scenes of the Dead Sea Scrolls believed this too, uh, that evil was going to be removed from the earth in one form or another. You know, uh, evil and bad things, and it was going to be world of peace and, and things like that. So I can see where Rambam may have gotten off on a tangent on that, but the fact is, Malachi 3, to be to be interpreted in a modern time. See, that was great writing for antiquity. And there's there's a chapter on it and a video, and it, it tells you just these things. It shows what everybody said. And the scroll of remembrance, and God declared, this this is you know, this is the day of the Lord, and I'm making a, a a scroll remembers for this deed because I know not everybody heeds me and reveres my name. And guess who's in the line of those people who don't go into the scroll? The rabbis. They've been dismissed as far as God's concerned. They don't heed him or revere his name. They'll say, wait a minute, I pray every day. I love God. This, that, that, and this. Look at all the things I do. And God says, yeah, you're a false teacher. You teach man's word over mine. You know, you can't cross God twice. All it's got to be is one time. How about Tovi a singer adding to the Torah by making the murder of the Holocaust, who all died, by the way. They didn't get along a lot. They weren't exposed to death. They died. Guilt offerings. Let's go to Leviticus. And a guilt offering is a compensatory offering. For the destruction of religious relics and something of that nature. And you got to pay the rabbi when you offer the animal. You know, it's an atonement. It's a restitution. What does that have to do with anything? I can understand the Christian saying our guy was an unblemished lamb. A.K.A. in Leviticus, sacrifice of an unblemished lamb. And of course, I'm blemished. 53. If you're in 53, you're blemished. If you fit it. Can't be Jesus. 11. Can't be Jesus. Not from the stump of Jesse. So, you know, I want to take this Christianity with the Jewish people saying, that's him. We believe it 100%. Of course, it'll take time to actually believe it, but intellectually, you can't deny it. And good luck, if you don't believe me, good luck to you ever finding Moshe, what's he going to do? Walk on water? <laughs> Make the blind see? That didn't even work for Jesus. Shortest verse in the New Testament. Jesus whipped. He had just raised Lazarus from the dead. 
On the fourth day, by the way, he was late getting there. <laughs> and it says that nobody believed he was who he said he was. Despite all those miracles, raising the dead, wine, water to wine, walking on water, feeding 5,000 with two loaves and five fish or five fish, or something like that. A few fish and a couple of loaves of bread. You know, Muhammad did the same thing. Same stories everywhere. That's a story for people who are basically starving to death. That's what it's for. It's it, it, That's what a storyteller does, what they want to hear. That's where these stories about Jesus come from. You know, he's a demigod. Again, Google myth. He just rolls right into the first couple of par definitions of a myth. It, it talks about demigods, man who is God. And how they become this and are this. Again, Muhammad did the same thing. He would make tidal waves come out of the uh, sea. I think it said ocean, but coming out of the sea, throwing fish at everybody. That was his. That was his little story. And so people did back then. They're illiterate. They just told stories, and you make things up. What do they want to hear? They want to hear about food. They want to hear about a long life. I want to hear about, you know, you can build your house and live in it, heaven on earth. There, the antiquity, messianic there. I can stay in my own house after I build it. Nobody's going to come throw me out. Verse 11. It's only verse 11 and 12 with. From the toil, this is Rashi again, it's more talk about the soul doing stuff on his own. From the toil of his soul, he will see. He will be satisfied with his knowledge. My servant will vindicate the just for many and their inequities he would bear. Okay, if the servant is all the people, Israel gathered this young man. And that's what Toby and Jews for Judaism says. My servant. All the, what this would read is, with his knowledge, with the knowledge of all my people, gathered together as one man, my people, all gathered together as one man, the Jewish people, would vindicate the just of the Jewish people for the many of the Jewish people. Was he going to do that for themselves? I mean, what is this? It doesn't fit people. It's an absurdity. And the fact that those two, as intelligent as they are, don't get that makes me really question their motives for saying it's Israel and not knowing full well it doesn't fit any, and we know any more than the Christian saying Jesus fit. You can bet a rabbi say the Christians have no idea. They can't read this right. Well, <laughs> that would go back at you. Nobody's reading it right until the righteous servant comes. Now you know what it's all about. You know how it's crafty writing on God's purpose. He knew it was going to be thousands of years before he had the day of the Lord and before his righteous servant Moshiach, prophet like Moses and Elijah, what description? Me. Would be his representation. Rashi. Midrash, from the toil of his soul, he would, it says eat, appears says he would see and be satisfied. I don't know which one it is. And he would not rob and plunder. I, I, I don't know. I don't see rob and plunder in here. With his knowledge, would vindicate the just. My servant, Israel, would judge justly all those who came to litigate before him. Well, the litigate before him is the Jewish people. You know, it's the Jewish people. Yeah. I've heard some of you say this too when you're talking about the Christians. How does God sacrifice himself since they call Jesus God? How is that? 
You know what? Uh, it's a little bit different than that. Anyway, he calls it the same problem. You can find it in the video on his explanation of 53, his commentary on 5310. It's in there. And their, in tech, uh, and their iniquities he would bear. He would bear. Israel would bear in the manner of all the righteous. As it is said, Numbers 18, verse 1, You and your sons shall bear the iniquity of the sanctuary. I don't know, does the sanctuary have iniquity? Okay, here's mine, JPS. Out of his anguish he shall see it. I'd eat it, it's see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. My righteous servant makes the many righteous. It is their punishment that he bears. Out of his anguish he shall see it. He shall enjoy it to the full through his devotion. Midrash commentary. This is a reference to Isaiah. 11.2, where one of the attributes of the spirit that alights upon the anointed one is a spirit of devotion and reverence for the Lord. The anguish, it says out of his anguish, is the emotional and physical pain Ezekiel suffered by punishment and the power of God to make him suitable for his purposes. God's righteous servant, myself, when he comes out of God's fire refinement and anguish of it, is devoted to God and I am and to the Jewish people who I do not want to see destroyed in the destruction of Israel because they won't build a temple and the rabbis will not teach them that, hey, we should have a temple right now. We don't know when he's coming back. You never hear that. No, you hear the world's going to love him as the Arab garbage. To another reason God knew he had to come back, straighten out Judaism and put a warning out there. What about never again, never forget? Isn't that serious? Well, why would you remember the Holocaust or that the world hates you when your rabbis are telling you the world's going to love you? False teachings, they should be dismissed and they got no business in the Jewish heaven unless they start teaching this book, straightening everything out as servants of God. Not a righteous servant. But I don't I don't feel that anger on the inside. I can call him right back then. God or yeah, God God I'm a puppet. That's all I am. Everything's good. But they do anger me. I still can get angry. I just don't feel it like I did before. It's just different. <laughs> no. is devoted to God and will joy, enjoy being a teacher of righteousness by his knowledge with long life. Knowledge, a Gentile, must be taught not only of the scripture, I've never read the Bible, but of the Jewish people and their history, the Middle East, war, Israel, and its government, and all else he may need to know, like Abraham. A stranger in a strange land of a strange language. And just as Ezekiel was given knowledge in his fire of refinement. This is from Ezekiel. And this is him. Uh, God said to me, Mortal, eat what is offered you. Eat this scroll. And go speak to the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth. And he gave me this scroll to eat. As he said to me, Mortal. Feed your stomach and feed your belly with this scroll that I give you. I ate it and it tasted as sweet as honey to me. Then he said to me, mortal, go to the house of Israel and repeat my very words to them. That's writing for antiquity. You don't eat a scroll and say it tastes like honey, okay? He said, what is being said here? He's, he's being taught the scripture in the fire of fire. My righteous servant makes the many righteous. It is their punishment that he bears. Midrash, commentary. God's righteous servant is a man of pain, suffering, and wounds throughout his life. Not one day on the cross. With persistent hardships and troubles, 
grievously affected, especially by disease, and severely injured at one time or another, as though plagued, smitten, afflicted by God. Born disfigured, afflicted by God. God didn't like me. That's what they would think in antiquity, and many still do today. By and large, most people don't believe that. These are the qualities that identify him as God's righteous servant who makes the many righteous. It is this life that has prepared him to be the teacher of righteousness. As God says, suffering makes you stronger. Going through all these things you've been through helps with what is up against you and what we're going to do together. And those who listen to and heed me and repent of their future sins. The new covenant having forgiven all past sins, but you still need to go to Yom Kippur. You need to get back to synagogue. Avoid the evil inclination. Okay? God is here. Sin free. New temple. The world is not going to look. But they're going to have a lot more respect for you. They'll, you'll no longer be the taunts of nations is how God says it. Excuse me. Commercial. <laughs> well, I'm a one man operation. I got to do everything. That shit is even gone off. What if it went off with the commercial? <laughs> Those who listen to and heed me and repent of their future sins. Again, continue to go to Yom Kippur. Just know that those sins you did before, some might have some in childhood that they really regret. And they're just never sure if God's forgiven them whether they attend Yom Kippur in the high holidays every year. The New Covenant forgives all current sins in your past. In the practice of Judaism, and again, today, it's been modified. Be mindful of it. I don't know exactly what it means. He doesn't tell me. He says that's for everybody else to decide of their own. And returning to synagogue are made righteous. Those who are in right standing with God. Another term that's, that really is something he taught me. And the rabbis are not in right standing with God for their false teachings as much as anything. There's other things God says, but this is the one that's important. Those who are in right saying with God are entered into the scroll of remembrance of Malachi 3. And he says it there. Someone, some stuff on him, even though the covenant itself of uh, Jeremiah 31, 31, God says, and all shall heed me. Well, it's written like that because that's what God would expect. If I'm going to forgive everybody's sins, I expect everybody to listen to me, and that means listening to my prophet. But in Malachi 3, he's very realistic. This is what the day of the Lord truly is. Okay? All evil is not leaving the planet. I'm here, people, and everything else these other prophets said has not happened and will not happen. It's just Malachi 3. God's here. He's prepared a prophet. Prophet like Moses. Righteous servant. Moshe, Elijah. He set it up. Listen, I was kind of stunned when he started teaching me this one description for righteous servant thing. It, it took a while for it to really take hold with me. But now, it's just as natural as anything, of course. And how clever and crafty the writing is. 53 itself. I want to make sure... They can't put an unblemished anything in here. Because I'm going to blemish him in the verses. Very crafty. The angel of the coming you desire is already leaving. Well, Jesus, 
describes John the Baptist as Elijah, the messenger who receives the new covenant of Jeremiah 31, but he leaves out the angel of the covenant that you desire, knowing full well with his knowledge. That meant sin forgiveness of the Jewish people. So why do you go to your death? And again, I don't think he thought he was. Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? There it goes. Glory again, but it always comes back, so I'm gonna keep going and finish it up. Malachi three. The Lord has heard and noted it, and the scroll of remembrance has been written at his behest concerning those who revere the Lord and esteem his name. And on the day that I am preparing, said the Lord of hosts, they shall be my treasured possessions. I will be tender toward them as a man is tender toward a son who ministers to, ministers to them. There's a way of interpreting it to say that's how God treats you in heaven. He's not going to come down here and treat you like that. And that's why being in the school of remembrance is the doorway to heaven, the Jewish heaven. The school of remembrance is not the book of life. The day that I am preparing is the day of the Lord. A man who is tender towards the son and ministers to him is a man who never wants to be without him, always with God in heaven. For behold, I am creating a new heaven and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered. They shall never come to mind. Be glad then and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I shall create Jerusalem as a joy and her people as a delight. This is Isaiah, that was Isaiah 65, 17 through 18. Isaiah 66, verse 22. For as the new heaven and the new earth, which I will make, shall endure by my will, declares the Lord, so shall your seed and your name endure, the name of Israel. The new heaven where the name Israel shall endure is a heaven with the addition of the angels Israel. This is after Judgment Day. And God decides primarily for this period from 1948 at least till my death that, that go into the scroll of remembrance. They'll be angelic. It's a new host of angels. That's why it's a new heaven. Now he says earth's going to be the same. I've explained that. He's going to choose the people again. Jewish people in heaven can sit out on their balcony of their rooms. I've been to the rooms and uh, watch creation created. Watch God make man. Watch him choose the people. And uh, you're going to see a lot of things that happen to the Jewish people. When he chooses somebody, things can get pretty rough. But suffering makes you stronger. That's why you're still here, Jewish people. I'm still here too. I've done plenty of it. Suffering. Verse 12. Therefore I, God, oh, this is from Rashi's book, Still God, will allot him a portion in public, and with the strong he shall share plunder because he poured out his soul to death. And with transgressions he was counted, and he bore the sin of many and interceded the transgressions. Do you see that? What he says in his Bible? Hebrew Bible, again, use your JPS. He poured out his soul to death. The man who is going to get long life and make the many righteous with long life in his knowledge. This is Rashi. And you don't need a Christian reading that. <laughs> he does, he's exposed to death. Verse 12. Wait till you read my 12 from the JPS. Okay, Rashi's commentary. Therefore, Commentary. Before he did this, I will allot him an inheritance and a lot land in public 
with the patriarchs. Okay? I, I don't have to be in public. He can just give me my inheritance. <laughs> he can give me my portion. Let's go to Vegas is what I always say. That's right, and cheat. God says, I'm not cheating. Stop asking me that. I said, all you got to do is look at the other poker hands and tell me what's in them. I said, what about roulette? Have balls rolling around? Just make it stick. Yeah. He won't do it, y'all. We're never going to get to Israel as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to die in there. He poured out his soul to death. He's got, in quotes, Genesis 24, 20. And she emptied her pitcher. Poured out his soul to death. And she, is that the bride? Emptied her pitcher. And with transgressors, he was counted. Okay, commentary. He suffered torments as if he had sinned and transgressed. And this is because of others. He bore the sin of the many. And interceded for the transgressors through his sufferings for good. Sorry for the film, you yeah. I'm going to get better equipment someday. Came to the world through him. Okay, JPS in my commentary. Assuredly, I will give him the many as his portion. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. For he exposed himself to death and was numbered among the sinners. This is the only one Jesus fits, by the way, is verse 12. It is a sinner. I got a top 10 sin. <laughs> lies of Jesus Christ and false prophecies. There's five of those. He shall receive the multitude as his spoil. Those who, who believe in him and are made righteous as the many who become a multitude. For he exposed himself to death. God's righteous servant is crushed with disease that exposes him to death but give him long life. Rashi says the Jewish people as one man Israel poured out their soul unto death. But does not tell us when this happened or will happen. Yeah, again, let's we'll just say whatever they want. It is. If they believe it. That's it. It is. That's reality for them. I, I'm sure I'll come to understand better and not be so critical. Whereas he bore the guilt of the many. Rashi says he suffered torments as if he had sinned and transgressed, and this is because of the others. He bore the sin of the many. You notice what you're not hearing? You're not hearing one thing on a five refinement that we see in Ezekiel when he is preparing him to be a prophet to the exiles. His face brazen as ears, his forehead hard as adamant. He shall not fear being dismayed by their people. And then all those things that happened to Ezekiel, pinned to the ground, chastised, maltreated. Well, think about it. Out of nowhere, he's being told by God Spirit of God entered him and God is in his spirit. He's being told by God. He's a man of divine beings. You're going to suffer the punishment, which is for sins, of the house of Israel and Judah. And he's a godly man, as best we know. And uh, he'd be beside himself. Maltreated? Well, well, wait a minute. I have never done anything. I follow your laws and stuff as best I can. He even says that at one time, Lord, apparently the Lord threw him a dead rabbit or something because he says, Lord, I have never eaten the flesh of a dead animal since I forever. And God says, this is one I was trying to remember. God says, I don't give you dung for your bread. Well, how kind. That's a kind of chastisement. But he does say, I, the people of Jerusalem will eat human feces. So he, he told Zekiel, told, look, I'm not making any human feces. But, you know, I give, I give you dumb. 
It's in there, but it's in the Hebrew Bible. That's God being really feminine. 